And what we're going to do is we'll come along here and we'll just create a new mass. So do a new conceptual mass. And simply all I'm going to do is just copy some reference, the ref existing reference planes that we've got there. So control and shift and we'll just move that one there. And we'll take this one here and control and shift there. Okay. So what I need to do is set that to be the current work plane. Okay. And all I'm going to do is place an align dimension here. Okay. And we'll equalize that. And we'll place another dimension. And this is going to be our overall length. Okay. So select that there, that dimension. We'll label it as a parameter. Uh, we'll leave it as a type, but we'll group it under dimensions. Uh, and we'll just call that length. Okay, so that I know works for me. If I just select this and drag it, you can see it interactively moves within the screen area. And uh, next thing I'm going to do is place a reference uh, line. Okay, and let's just set the work plane to be this plane here, and we'll place it from here to here. So it snaps to the intersections of those reference planes. So if I select this, you should see this this line uh, grow in length. Okay, so what we need to do now is place some points along, because what we're going to do, place the points along, they're going to be planes, and I'm going to shift or uh, transfer in uh, that line base family, place it on the work planes, and then we're going to control the shape of it. So what we do is place a couple of reference points, just quickly, uh, crudely position them there, not too worried about that. I'm going to go to level one. A quick way to space them, if we just get the align dimension, we'll just snap to the actual points themselves. Oh, bit of a mistake there. Let's back up. Okay, just come along and pick these points. If we just select equalize, that will equalize them along the uh, line. And I'm just going to delete that um, temporary dimension. Um, go back to my 3D view. So you can see my, then my points are equally positioned along that line. Now, if I actually grab that and then grow, grow it, as you can see there, they equally um, space themselves apart. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a crossing window and we'll filter out just the five points there. But what I actually want to see is their plane. So if we go to the element properties, instance properties, you can see here we can say, make sure that they're visible. Uh, and we can also say we always want to see the show the reference plane. So if we apply that and then the points look slightly different. Okay, so that's a, that's a a far better visual way of seeing the plane. Okay, so just a window tile. I'm um, just going to close this window here. And I'm just going to load in my um, sort of strand circle, as I've described it. So we're just going to load it into uh, this project here. Okay, so there's a little bit of jiggery pokery here. You can see that it's trying to um, position the uh, line base family somewhere. So what I'm going to do is go to create, I'm going to set the work plane to be that plane. Okay, and go place on work plane and we'll place it there. And there's a few steps we have to do, keep clicking the work plane and then place on that work plane. Um, just bear with me while I just do that. Place on that work plane there. Again, set that work plane, place it. Okay, and finally set that one there place it there okay so we now have our all our strands in there with all their associated types I think that one there's incorrect so let's just uh, uh, reposition another one there so set that work plane there place and put it there okay that's a bit better all right so that's sort of actually it might be the reference line there that's slightly ski with but never mind that the principles here should work now remember when I showed you that circle before it had all the different types in so what we can do now is we can select um, each of these uh, families and we can add a label actually and add a parameter for the type okay so the actual mass type so um, what we're going to do is we'll call this one here one but I'm actually going to make it an instance parameter um, I'm not going to worry about the grouping we'll just leave it as our other we'll select this one here and add a parameter and we'll group that under uh, I'll call that name two. I mean, I'm sure you could come up with a far better name than myself. Um, and we'll put another one in here, three. This one in here, and we'll make this four. And then finally, we'll make this one here, five. So what this is going to allow us to do is to swap out uh, different types of these lines. Okay. 
And this is the trick, because okay, okay, if I try and build the form now, okay, with it flat, it's gonna break. Okay, so if I go to my types, and we come down here, we can see, now I should have actually gone through and made these type parameters, so let bear with me while I just tweak that over, because otherwise it will definitely break. Okay, let's put that using this instance parameters here. Okay, so if I have a look now, I've got my various different um, circles there, um, or line base, and you can see they're all set at, um, so one, I think they're all set at zero degrees, that's fine. Now, if I come on here, and we'll say the first one um, is zero degrees, the second one, if I come along here, needs to be 45, this one needs to be 90, 135, and finally 180. When I apply that, you can see that they're gonna twist. Okay, now this is the key to it because this has caught me out a couple of times. If I try and build the form with them all flat, it's definitely going to break. And again, there's a little bit of picking and clicking here that you need to do to, to get the first surface to be created. So I'm going to come along with my pointer and you can see, and watch the status bar. This is really, again, quite key. Click the pointer. Okay, I'm going to tab. Okay, until I see the line. That's fine. Come along here, tab, get the line. Again, get the line, line, and then finally tab to get that line. Now once I've done that, I choose create form. Okay, and you can see then I've got the form. If I go to my types, let's do a new type, and we'll say uh, like one revolve or something like that. So one rev, okay. So that's fine, and if we do a new one, and we're gonna call this one two, and, and we'll call this one flat. If I come back to all my parameters, and again, make these all zero for these types, and we apply that. Okay, you're gonna get a little bit of warning about inaccuracies, and we'll make it flat. So now I've got one revolution, and I can apply that, or I've got one flat, okay? Let's leave it in the revolution, okay? Because I'm gonna just tweak it a little bit more. Okay, uh, we're going to place a point here on this, uh, on the edge of the surface, and we'll place another point here. Okay, uh, well, let's set the work plane to be this point. Okay, and we'll just come along here and place a little circle. Now, I could set a radius to that. Uh, I'm going to leave it, actually, for the time being. And then we'll set the work plane down here, and we'll draw another circle and ideally what we really want is make it the same size so come along here it's 2.1 yeah that's fine and then what we do come along and if we tab okay till you get the actual edge of the surface you can see it's highlighted there i don't think that circle is quite right let's just remove this one again and we'll set the work plane here so i'm snapping actually actually at the intersection of that point so we'll come along here and again make that uh, 2.1, fine. Okay, so again, let's try again. Tab to the edge, get the circle, and I'll choose create form. Okay, and we'll do likewise, we'll come down here, tab, get to the circle, and choose create form. Okay, so it's sort of getting there now. Um, all I'm going to do now is select that surface, and I'd just like to um, subdivide it, if we can actually get to that surface. So you're going to, again, watch this because it catches m me out a number of times, and fairly regularly. If I go and select that surface and try and subdivide it, it's not going to have it. So I actually come along and tab until I get the surface. Then you get the divide tool, and we can divide it. Uh, we'll leave the number of grids. Um, let's make those like 20 this way. Oh, no, it's the wrong way. Let's make it... Um, one that way okay and let's get make sure we get the divided surface and we'll make it 20 that way and I'm just going to quickly change it from um, just that uh, we'll actually put the checkerboard pattern on there so you can actually see what's going to happen so it's, a, it's almost like a DNA strand that I'm trying to create um, so if we go back to my types now we've obviously got one revolution if I turn it to flat it's going to go flat now you can obviously create different types here uh, for different um, variants, uh, let's do a new one and just call it, um, what would this call it, I don't know, uh, morph or something like that, 
Um, and you can be a little bit careful here because you can actually break it very, very quickly. If we just swap these over for like 0, 135, 0, 135 and apply that. Okay, so you can see there I've actually broken it. Again, if I had more um, surface edges in there, I, that wouldn't necessarily happen. But um, So we'll just leave it flat for the time being. Okay, so hopefully that little example has shown you um, how I went about uh, creating a more advanced version of this. And you'll see here, if we go to the types, um, I've got a helix which is anti-clockwise, one which is clockwise. I've actually had some like ripple effects in there. And you'll find it's actually easier uh, when you've got um, um, more sort of strand circles in there to play with. Okay, so that's the end of the tutorial. I hope you find that useful.